Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to downgrade your iOS device from iOS 15 to iOS 14. Now, iOS 15 was released recently to the public and comes with many new features. However, if you are having problems with the software, it might be necessary to downgrade back to iOS 14. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do this on an iPhone 6S. However, this will work on all iPhones and iPads that are supported by iOS 14 and iOS 15. So, let's get straight into it. So for this process of downgrading your iOS device from iOS 15 to iOS 14, you'll need the device itself which you are going to perform the downgrade on. In this case, I'm using an iPhone 6S, but this will work on all iPhones and iPads. You also need the computer you are going to use to perform the downgrade. So this can be a Mac or a PC. Um, just make sure that you iTunes supports the version of Windows which you're using, which it should um, anyway. And you'll also need a lightning cable so that you can plug it into your computer to perform the downgrade. And you'll also need a Wi-Fi connection that you can download the uh, IPSW file on, so the uh, software for your iOS device. And just make sure you have enough data because it'll be about a four to five gig download. So a uh, fairly large download. Um, so make sure you have enough data for that, otherwise additional data charges may apply. So this year Apple is allowing you to uh, stay on iOS 14 if you would like to and they'll continue releasing security patches for it. However, Apple in the past does often stop signing their iOS versions. So the only available iOS version there is to downgrade to is 14.8 which is the latest version of iOS 14 as of the time of recording. Now, if Apple stops signing this, you'll no longer be able to downgrade to iOS 14. And it will mean you have to go to iOS 15, which means you'll need to do this process pretty quickly just to be sure that you can still get it before they stop signing it. So I'm gonna to go to a screen recording on the Mac and show you how to do it. However, the steps will be very similar for Windows and older Mac OS versions. So there shouldn't be many differences there and it should be pretty easy to follow on. Now let's switch over. Okay, so to start off, you'll need to download the IPSW file for your specific device. Now the IPSW is basically just the software. So in this case, you'll need to download iOS 14.8 for your iOS device. So what you need to do is go to your web browser, in this case I'm using Safari, and then go to your web browser and type in ipsw.me. Now I'll link this in the description below so that you can easily access it, so don't worry about um, trying to find these links. Uh, and then just click enter, and then you'll see a page like this. Now what you'll need to do is choose a device you're using, so I'll either be in iPhone or an iPad or potentially an iPod Touch. But in this case, we're using an iPhone. Just click close if you see any of these ads. And then scroll down until you find your specific model. So um, make sure you choose the right model, otherwise this process won't work. So I'm going to choose iPhone 6S here. And then you'll see a page like this. Now, you'll want to make sure that it's under the signed IPSWs here. So if it's got a green tick and it's in green font, then that means it's still signed and you'll be able to install it. If it's got a cross, um, it means it's no longer signed by Apple, which means they won't let you um, install it onto your iOS device. So we'll choose iOS 14.8 or whatever the latest version is of iOS 14 when you're watching this. And then you'll need to click download. So it is 4.74 gigabytes, so that's a fairly large download. So make sure you do have a good internet connection and speed and also enough data for that. Um, so once that downloads, um, you can close out of your web browser. 
and I've got the download here. So now we're at the stage where you'll need to get your lightning cable and plug it into your Mac or PC and then plug it into your phone. So we'll plug it into your iOS device and I can tell it's charging now. And now that that's plugged in, what we'll need to do is go to Finder and then click on under locations, the iPhone. Um, so it, it'll be whatever name your phone or iPad is called. In this case, mine's just called iPhone. So I'll just make this a bit bigger so that you can see it easily. And you've got a few options here. Now, it is worth being aware that if you're on any of the iOS 15 betas or the public releases of iOS 15, you will not be able to restore a backup that was done on iOS 15 to iOS 14 as it's an older version. So if you back up while you're on iOS 15, you won't be able to restore that on 14, which means you'll have to use whatever backup you did on iOS 14, if any. Now, if there isn't any backups you did on that version, you will have to set the device up as a new device. So just make sure you're aware of that, otherwise you will lose your data. Uh, but if you are planning to go to, back to iOS 15 at some point, you can back it up just in case so that you still have all your data there, and I certainly recommend doing that. So now, um, once you've downloaded your IPSW like we did in the step before, you'll need to go to the Restore iPhone button, and if you're on a Mac, you'll need to hold down the Option key uh, and click it. If you're on Windows, it'll be holding down the Shift key and clicking that in iTunes. But um, because we're on a Mac, we're going to hold down the Option key and click Restore iPhone. So now we'll see the selection tool where we have to find the files. So just locate your file. So it might be in the Downloads folder or wherever you've saved it. So I'll just open it up and then I'll click the file here. So that's the IPSW and then just click Open. Now you'll see a screen like this. Your Mac will erase and restore your iPhone to iOS 14.8 and will verify the restore with Apple. So the verifying step is where it checks that it's still signed. If it is not signed, it will fail at that step, which is why you need to make sure that it is signed um, so that it will pass the verification step. Now I'm going to go back to the normal recording so that you can see what happens with the iPhone as we click restore. So I'll switch to that now. All right, so we can see the iPhone here is still on the home screen and we've got the message on the Mac about um, restoring. So we'll just click the restore button and then we'll see what happens. So it says iOS 15.0, your Mac is repairing, preparing to restore this software on this iPhone. So we've got the extracting software status bar down the bottom. So let's see what happens when that finishes. It's going pretty quickly at the moment. And now it says preparing iPhone for restore. So what we should see is that the iPhone shuts off like it did now, and it should reboot and start restoring if it's all gone successfully. Okay, so it's been put into recovery mode. And it's sort of flickering around a bit at the moment. We still have that status bar on the Mac that it's preparing the iPhone. So it's back on the Apple logo at the moment. So let's see what happens. Okay, and now we have the status bar. So this is going to show the progress of restoring the iPhone. So this may take um, maybe 30 minutes to an hour from my experience, just depending on the speed of the chip and also um, some variables that can happen in between. Um, but you should start to see a little black um, bar fill this uh, empty bar at the moment. It does say restoring iPhone software on the Mac now, which is showing a similar progress bar to what we are seeing on the iPhone right now. So it's also worth noting that the iPhone may reboot several times. That's okay if that happens, just let it go. That's what it's supposed to do. And if you do click any of the buttons, it won't do anything. Sometimes it does come up with a message that it says that um, it you can't click any of the buttons and it will reboot when it's completed, but in this case, it's not doing that. 
but just let it go and do its thing and uh, we'll come back when this is finished. All right, so the iPhone is now rebooting and you can see on the Mac, it says, your iPhone has been restored to factory settings and is restarting. Please leave your iPhone connected. It will appear in the sidebar after it restarts. So we've got a empty status bar once again and it looks like it has finished restoring. So we can just click OK on the Mac and it has sort of disappeared from the finder. It's still detecting it, but there's no information about it. So we'll just let it reboot and see what happens. Okay, so we can see that the iPhone is now on the hello screen. So um, we can see it's scrolling through all the different languages on the hello screen, um, but it is ready to go. So we can just wake it back up and it will be in English. So we'll just run through the setup quickly. So we can now unplug it from the Mac because we no longer need it. And we'll just close off the finder window. Um, and we can now just set up the iPhone as usual. So we'll unlock it and you, you can click your language. I'm going to click English and then Australia. And it will just take a moment to set the language. So we'll just let it do that quickly. And then it says quick start. So this allows you to bring in another iOS device and br bring across all of its data. Um, I'm just gonna click set up manually for now. After that step, it will ask you to get sign into your Wi-Fi network and put the password in. And then once you do that, you'll see a screen that says it may take a few minutes to activate your iPhone. Just let that go for a little while um, and if you didn't remove your iCloud account from before, it will be activation locked. So you'll just need to enter your iCloud username and password so that you can get into the phone. Then it will say data and privacy. So you can read through that and then click continue. Touch ID. I'll just set up touch ID later. Don't use. And then it wants a passcode. I'll just set that up later as well. Don't use passcode. Don't use passcode. And then apps and data, it'll ask you if you want to restore from an iCloud backup or a local backup, um, or if you don't want to transfer anything at all. I'll just click don't transfer apps and data for now. Then it will ask for your Apple ID. Um, so you can enter that in if you would like. But on this screen, I'll just skip the Apple ID for now and I'll put that in later. So I'll just go set up later in settings. Don't use, just so that I can show you the setup process just to read and agree to the terms and conditions. Then it asks about keeping your iPhone up to date. You'll just click continue. iMessage and FaceTime, I'll just click not now because I'll need to sign in for that. I'm gonna disable location services for now, but you can choose whatever settings you would like here. For Siri, I'll just go set up later in settings. Screen time, I'll also set up later. And for iPhone analytics, I'm just going to click don't share, but you can choose whatever options you would like. I'm also going to just click the light appearance and keep it at the standard zoom. And then it will say, welcome to iPhone. You can just click get started and it's on the iOS 14 homepage. And just to show to you that this is definitely on iOS 14, you can go to settings, general, then about, and you can see that it is sitting on iOS 14.8. And if we tap that, we can see the build number is 18H17. So that's a good way um, to check that your software is on definitely iOS 14. And once you've done that, you've got a fully functioning iOS 14 device. And if you ever do want to update to iOS 15 in the future, you can go to settings, general software update, and it will check for the update. Now you can see here, this is where they're allowing you to choose if you'd like to stay on iOS 14 or go to iOS 15. So you can see here, iOS 14.8, your iPhone software is up to date. Now, if there's any iOS 14 updates here, um, you'll see them here and you can download them. But if you'd like to install iOS 15 at any time, you can just click under also available, upgrade to iOS 15, and you'll see the update there and you can just install it. So hopefully this was helpful in allowing you to downgrade your iOS device from iOS 15 to iOS 14, and it's worked really successfully for you. Also, I really hope that Apple does continue signing a version of iOS 14 
for um, a long time in the future so that you can always downgrade from iOS 15 to iOS 14 if you are having problems. But just to be on the safe side, I would make sure that you do this before they stop signing it, just in case they do that. Thanks for watching this video on Unpack Technologies. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.